On today's video, we're going to tell you all about the best and worst parts of all of the suburbs in and around Raleigh, North Carolina. And we'll do it all up next. Hi, this is Chris Morton, real estate broker with eXp Realty in Raleigh, North Carolina. On today's video, we're going to detail all of the best parts and worst parts of the suburbs around Raleigh, North Carolina. We hope this is gonna be a handy guide for you if you've just recently moved to Raleigh and not sure where you wanna buy a house or if you're out of town and contemplating moving to Raleigh. We hope this is going to give you an easy, understandable pros and cons list for each of the suburbs. And so, in no particular order, let's begin with Cary, North Carolina. So Cary is amazing, amazing suburb of Raleigh, especially because it is close to everything. It is extremely centrally located, has a really great international food scene, has tons of green space, parks, and places for you to go if you like to be outside, and is very well organized and very well planned, pretty easy to get from point A to point B. The negatives of Cary, North Carolina, it completely lacks the southern charm that you're going to find in some of the other suburbs and in Raleigh. It's mostly built out. There's not a whole lot of new construction going on. It's very expensive to buy a house in Cary, North Carolina, especially relative to some of the other suburbs. And because it's so centrally located and has so much going for it, it is a very, very, very competitive housing market. Homes in Cary sell within hours sell for 25 to 100,000 or more over asking price. And very, very often houses that are on the market in Cary are resulting in multiple offers and a bidding war. Next up, we have Wake Forest, North Carolina. The positives of Wake Forest, it's growing with lots of expansion. It is one of the most popular suburbs. Wake Forest is really beautiful. It's located near and on Falls Lake, so there's lots of great opportunity for boating, hiking, swimming, all of those sort of things. It has an amazing historic downtown, very, very charming, definitely worth your time. If you are living in Wake Forest or just coming for a visit, definitely check out downtown Wake Forest. And there's still plenty of opportunities for new construction in Wake Forest. The negatives of Wake Forest, traffic and commute times are getting worse and worse. It's getting very populated and so therefore you're getting a lot of, a lot of cars on the road during rush hour. Another negative, home prices have increased quite a bit in Wake Forest over the last few years. It's fairly distant from Research Triangle Park as most of the new construction that's happening is happening to the north and to the east of Wake Forest. It therefore is very difficult up to an hour drive to get from Wake Forest to Research Triangle Park. And unfortunately, roads are not designed very well. This is not like Cary where everything was completely well laid out. Wake Forest started as a tiny little community and has grown and grown and grown. And the growth has resulted in a lot of really wonky roads. Next up is Morrisville, North Carolina. So the pros of Morrisville is location, location, location. It's super close to the airport. It's super close to Research Triangle Park and has tons of international restaurants. It's a great place to live if you're not a big fan of long commutes. The negative of Morrisville, it unfortunately has no downtown, no charm, none of that Southern charm we talked about earlier. And there's not much new construction going on right now. Prices starting on at about $450,000 and going up from there on new construction currently. Another negative of Morrisville, it has a lot of warehouses and industrial buildings, especially closer to the airport. And speaking of airport, the biggest negative of Morrisville is you're getting a lot of airplane noise. Next up, we have Apex, North Carolina. So Apex's pros are that they have an amazing downtown in Apex. It's right on 540, so therefore it has really easy access to the airport, Research Triangle Park, and just about all of the triangle. Apex also has a lot of new construction going on, so there's lots of opportunities to buy new construction as well as resale. And Apex is super duper close to Cary, so you're gonna get all of the amenities that Cary has to offer for just a fairly short drive. In fact, it's very difficult to know when Cary ends and Apex begins and vice versa. They're that close. There are some negatives of Apex, unfortunately. It is quite a drive to Raleigh. Home prices have increased quite a lot due to the fact that Cary is getting 
somewhat built out. So all of the construction is going towards Apex, which is causing prices to rise and rise as demand rises. And the newer parts of Apex that the building is going on are in the south and the west, so that means much longer drive times to get to 540 or to the rest of the triangle from those newer communities. Next up, we have the suburb of Holly Springs, North Carolina. And so there are lots of positives of Holly Springs. Has a really, really nice downtown, very, very vibrant, and especially on weekends, you can see there's a lot of stuff to do taking clients through Holly Springs to get from one town to the next or one neighborhood to the next. And they were blown away with all of the really cool things going on in Holly Springs. Another positive of Holly Springs, it's very close to Cary and Apex. So if you have a favorite restaurant looking at you, Apex Wings, it's super easy if you live in Holly Springs to get to Apex, super easy to get to Cary and all the restaurants, all the grocery stores and all of that that's going on in Cary. And there's also a lot of new construction opportunities going on in Holly Springs in addition to all the restyles that are out there. The negatives of Holly Springs, unfortunately, there's not a lot to do. So you are going to have to drive to Apex and mostly carry. It is a far distance away from Raleigh and Durham. So you're going to have a good bit of drive time involved in that. And there's not a lot of really cool independent restaurants in Holly Springs. You're going to be mainly going to the chain restaurants. Next up, we have Youngsville, North Carolina. So Youngsville has a lot of pros going for it. It has a very charming, although small, downtown area. Definitely worth driving through if you are planning on moving to Youngsville and checking out what's there. As well, homes are fairly inexpensive when compared to the rest of the triangle. You are definitely gonna find some value in Youngsville and there is some new construction going on in Youngsville, quite a bit of it actually. And Youngsville is extremely close to Wake Forest. You have about a 10 to 15 minute drive to get into Wake Forest with all of the restaurants, all of the shopping, grocery stores, on and on that you're gonna find in Wake Forest. The negative of Youngsville, it's pretty much far from everything except Wake Forest. So you're gonna expect a lot of drive time, especially if you were to work in like Research Triangle Park. It's even worse than if you were living in Wake Forest. And as I mentioned before, the downtown is really charming and cute, unfortunately. It's really small, not a lot to do there. Great place to go, but don't expect you're gonna spend your entire day or evening hanging out and enjoying the nightlife of Youngsville. There's just not any of it. And unfortunately, there's very little shopping grocery stores in Youngsville. You're gonna to have to drive to Wake Forest. So be prepared for a little bit of drive time in Youngsville. Next up, we have Nightdale, North Carolina. So Nightdale is very close to Raleigh. You have the opportunity to go into Raleigh, especially downtown Raleigh, and enjoy the nightlife, shopping, restaurants, et cetera, that you're gonna find there. As well, getting to just about any part of Raleigh, North Raleigh, or the area around Midtown where North Hills is and Costco is, super, super easy drive. Homes are also fairly inexpensive in Nightdale, especially compared to the rest of the Triangle. Lots of growth is happening in the Nightdale area, some new construction going on. You're gonna get some good value for your money and would be definitely a good option if you're looking for a home on a budget. As well, one of the big, big positives of Nightdale is Prime Barbecue. So this is a barbecue place that we have gone to many times. We're doing a series on best barbecue in the Triangle and I can tell you ahead of time, Prime is gonna be very close to the top of that list. Definitely a destination that I would recommend you go to if you are in Nightdale. So the negatives of Nightdale, unfortunately, it lacks a downtown of its own. It's a small little area. It is growing. We expect that there's gonna be more of a vibrant downtown ha happening soon. There's talk that there's gonna be a food hall in Nightdale. So that's in that downtown area, that's definitely gonna help. And it's near Prime, so plus plus equals yay. Unfortunately, also Nightdale lacks character. There's not a lot of charm about it, especially Southern charm. Hard to tell where you are based on what you see because there's gonna be a lot of chain restaurants, a lot of chains, big box stores, that sort of thing. Next up, we have Garner, North Carolina, and Garner has a lot of pros of its own. It's very, very close to Raleigh. You can be in Raleigh within eight, 10, 15 minutes from your home in Garner, which is very, very cool. And it's affordable compared to a lot of the other suburbs around Raleigh. And eventually, Interstate 540 will be going around Garner, making it super convenient to get from Garner to Research Triangle Park, 
airport, et cetera, et cetera. The negatives of Garner, unfortunately, there's not a lot to do there. To get your nightlife restaurant fix on, you're probably gonna have to go to downtown Raleigh, so it's a little bit of a drive. Again, 10, 15 minutes, so it's not like you gotta drive an hour, but sometimes it's more convenient to drive three minutes than 23 minutes. It's lacking in character and that Southern charm we talked about. Downtown is basically one single street, not a lot going on. It's cute, but not like this vibrant downtown like you would see in some of the other suburbs. And unfortunately, like Nightdale, it has a lot of chain restaurants, chain shopping, all of that sort of thing. Not a lot of independent opportunities to go out dining or shopping. Next up, we have Fuquay Verena, North Carolina. And yes, it's pronounced Fuquay Verena. We get a lot of people me messing that up, mixing that up. So Fuquay Verena was the merger of two little towns, Fuquay and Verena. So it has two downtowns. The Fuquay downtown is my favorite. Super cool, and in fact, it's one of my favorite downtowns in the entire triangle. Super charming, great restaurants, Vicious Fishes is there. So if I ever am out showing property to any client coming into town, they get to go see what Vicious Fishes is about. I have not had a bad meal there, love the place. As well, they have coffee shops, Stick Boy cinnamon buns at the Stick Boy Bakery, on and on and on, really, really cool downtowns. Fuquay Verena also has a lot of new construction opportunities and it's probably one of the biggest growing areas of the triangle. You can get a lot of value for your money, although prices range from fairly inexpensive to all the way up to $700,000, $800,000 if you want it to. So another positive of Fuquay Verena is it's less likely to get snow, if you're anti-snow, than some of the northern parts of the triangle. So you are not having to worry about being stuck home while everyone in Wake Forest, Roxboro, Youngsville are dealing with a few inches of snow. And eventually I-540 is going to come through Fuquay Verenas, which is gonna make it way more convenient to get from Fuquay Verena to Research Hunger Park Airport, all of that sort of thing. The negatives of Fuquay Verena, because of all this growth that I'm talking about, traffic can get a little congested during rush hour. It is far from a lot of parts of the triangle. You're gonna to have to do a lot of driving currently until Interstate 540 gets through to get to Research Triangle Park or Chapel Hill, Durham, all of that. And because Fuqua Verena is so far from the other parts of the triangle, you unfortunately feel a little disconnected like you're on an island to yourself. And lastly about Fuqua, because it's up and coming and growing, Parts of it are very much out in the country, so it has a very rural feel. For some people, that's a positive. For others, that's a negative. Next up, let's talk about Clayton, North Carolina. So Clayton's a great suburb of Raleigh. It has a really, really cool downtown with lots of new shopping centers opening up. It has a really affordable area. You can get a lot of home for your money in Clayton. It's also less likely to get snow as it is on the eastern side of the triangle. It's also very peaceful and very rural. That may be a positive or a negative depending on your lifestyle and what you're expecting. On the negative side, it's far from Research Triangle Park. It could take you anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour to get from Clayton to RTP. It doesn't have very much in the way of hiking, outdoor activities, lakes, that sort of thing. And not much to do outside of the downtown area of Clayton, unfortunately. And another negative, because there's not much going on other than in downtown Clayton, if you're buying a new construction home, you're probably buying something that's 10 or 15 minutes drive time from your home to the downtown. Next up, we have Wendell, North Carolina. So Wendell has one of the best downtowns in the triangle. Very, very cool. Lots of restaurants, lots of shopping, really nice, and most of it is an independence. It is very close to Raleigh. As well, it's very close to Nightdale where you're gonna find all of those big box shopping. So if you need to get to Target Walmart, you're maybe 10 minutes away from Wendell. Another positive of Wendell is Wendell Falls. It's a mega neighborhood, mega development with homes of all different sizes and shapes. You can get a home starting with a $325,000 townhome currently all the way up to a $750,000 larger detached home. But overall, Wendell is a very affordable place to live. 
The negatives of Wendell, it feels a lot further from Raleigh than it is. Again, you jump on the interstate and you can be in downtown Raleigh in about 10 or 15 minutes, but just geographically on a map and just from where you are when you're living in Wendell, it feels like you're kind of on that island to yourself, like similar to what you're gonna have in Fuqua Verena. Another negative of Wendell, it doesn't have a lot of shopping and it doesn't have a lot of grocery stores. There's a brand, brand new Publix grocery store that just opened in Wendell Falls, but that's about the extent of it, which means you're gonna have to drive to Nightdale if you're not a fan of Publix. And unfortunately, based on where it's located geographically, Wendell is pretty far drive to Research Triangle Park and the airport. Next up is Zebulon, North Carolina. So one of the positives of Zebulon is that it is probably one of the most affordable suburbs in which you can go buy a home. Another positive of Zebulon, it's rural and therefore has a much slower pace than a lot of other places in the Triangle. Now that can also be a con if you are looking for a fast paced, go, go, go lifestyle. Zebulon has a small town feel and a lot of Southern charm going for it. But Zebulon also has some negatives. It is really far from just about everything. If you need to get to the Research Triangle Park or anywhere in that area very quickly, you probably do not want to think about moving to Zebulon. And unfortunately, because it's small and rural, it's also a little bit boring. Next up, we have the suburb of Roseville, North Carolina. Yes, it's spelled Rollsville, but all of us locals call it Roseville, so be prepared. So what are the positives of Roseville? Well, number one, it's super close to Raleigh and Wake Forest. Really great opportunities to zip over to Wake Forest for something or zip over to Raleigh. It's pretty much attached around Heritage subdivision. It's pretty much attached to Wake Forest just to give you an idea how close it is. There is a lot of new construction going on in Roseville and there's lots of opportunity for new construction to happen, development to happen, shopping to happen. The negatives of Roseville is there's only one main way, Highway 401, to get in and out. So you can imagine with all the growth going on, you're gonna see some bottlenecks, rush hour traffic has now become a thing in this town. Another negative, it is really far from Research Triangle Park. Not recommended to live in Roseville if you're planning on working around Research Triangle. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of character or things to do in Roseville. You're gonna pretty much have to go to Raleigh or most likely go to Wake Forest to go to a restaurant or shopping or anything like that. So there you have it. That was an overview of most of the main suburbs around Raleigh. We hope it's been helpful. Please check out this playlist if you want to go in depth on any of the suburbs we talked about. Please like and subscribe below. We appreciate everyone watching. Look forward to your comments and we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.